shows the budget. Uh, they have uh, two methods for free license uh, to unlock the professional version. Uh, it, it, it by default has a, a free light version that doesn't include some of the advanced versions. Uh, so we'll get you unlocked and you can use the whole world you want uh, that the uh, that they don't need to do for this weekend. Uh, so I want to kind of give a brief overview about what a game program looks like. Uh, this is probably typical common. I don't know if this is universal, but uh, usually a game program consists of a current game state, uh, which is all your data uh, that represents the state of the game, what, what the score is, where your player is on the screen, what your inventory is, all that kind of information in the game state. And then you have game logic, which is the rules of the game, uh, the rules that the program uh, operates by to update that game state each uh, fraction of a second. So uh, there's a, a big loop that goes on that controls the game. And it's basically what you see there. It's, it's while the game is still running, or while the game's not over, uh, it applies the game logic to the current game state and generates the next game state. And so this happens typically 30 times, 60 times, 120 times over, very, very rapidly uh, per second. Um, and so you have to train yourself to think in terms of um, these uh, programs that you're writing out, uh, basically executing uh, to generate the very next step in the game in, a, in that moment of time. So uh, this will throw people up at first because they think, well, I want to have my guy go from point A to waypoint B to waypoint C to the final destination D, and I'll write a loop that does like a well not at destination update uh, position incrementally closer to, and then all that executes in one step. And so in, in one thirtieth of a second, you actually move the guy from all those positions, but the game doesn't update the screen until the end of the, the game, uh, game loop executes, and that while loop is all rolled up inside of the game loop. So in one frame of animation, you're here, the next animation, you're here, and the player doesn't actually see all the intermediate. So you have to be uh, having this now. Uh, I'll just get right into Game Maker uh, and talk about uh, the, the very first fundamental uh, in Game Maker. Uh, I want to switch over to the uh, uh, switch over to the game maker interface, uh, and uh, this is the the program that's running. Um, over on the left hand side, we have uh, what we call the resource tree, and these are all the things in your game that uh, you can build and then use as building blocks to make it. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is the room. And the room is basically a place where stuff happens in the game. So I'm going to create a room right now. And I'm going to rename it. Uh, and this is just a, a, an empty space. So now that we have a game room created, uh, if I run this, this is the, the simplest game that could possibly exist in game maker. It's not really a game, it's just you know it's a simple program. It almost doesn't do anything, it's just a empty room. So uh, in the room editor window, we have uh, settings. And you can control the height and width of the room. And then I'll change these. Hopefully, it's set up on the And let me set the background. You can have a picture image background, and you can have a flat background color. We're actually going to build a uh, case invader uh, because I happen to like that game and it's simple enough that I can do it in the amount of time that we have here. And uh, it will allow me to, to show off a lot of the different features and how it works. So this will be our, our group for uh, the game to run. And it has black background and basically all there is to it for right now. I'm going to show you one other thing. Under settings here, uh, I did a minute ago, but uh, this creation code, this is where you encode uh, the game maker 
leverage to um, control what happens when the room is increased versus creates a living in that function here. Yeah. Uh, other stuff, uh, I'm not going to put anything in this right now, but I can do that real quick. Uh, so, other stuff in the resource tree that we have to build here, uh, we have uh, objects and we have sounds and sprites. And the other stuff is uh, a little bit out of scope, not going to deal with. And that's on the balance of scripts. Might do a script, but uh, all these other things are, are resources of different types of things that we're building by. And uh, so we'll talk about objects uh, just briefly. This is a, our first object, will be the thing that we make uh, the player out of. Preloaded the game five is I preloaded a bunch of sprites. So uh, sprites are your graphic resources, and they can be animated. They consist of multiple frames of bitmap data. Uh, they also consist of metadata. Uh, they'll give you uh, some uh, variables or constant uh, data that they can take access in order to uh, draw a move during the player round. Let me just select the uh, player sprite here. Wait a minute. And so we have a player object. And I can put the player into my room. I can stop on that. Thank you. 
questions with uh, footage are really important to me because you can detect when you're getting things to when you uh, encounter an obstacle or uh, get collisions with other types of objects. And you can tell the different ones to think about the keyboard, uh, which this type of gets to you down, uh, you press down. Uh, the key press, which is uh, the event for, uh, it triggers just in the, in the first frame of, uh, for the first step in the game, when the key is actually pressed down. And after that, the key is held down, the key press and then goes to fire. And the key board is out. Fires every step that you come down. And in the release, when you, when you release the key, uh, this is not fire. You have to take the mouse stuff. Uh, basically, it's not going to do anything with the mouse, but it's not going to have mouse events to protect you from other steps and drop on the robot. It's also on the job. You can protect your mouse to enter a region or a collision box. Let's uh let's do a keyboard event for me. Give me your left arrow. And we have a number of different options for how we can handle the fact. The way I'm going to do it is we we'll use the variable for the object. We didn't program any of them, uh, mainly there's a lot of no in variables that you don't have to uh, program. It makes it easier with all the stuff that we're operating. And the position of uh, the object, you have to find that here that are in front, which are corresponding to the plus where they're on the group. So I'm going to say when you uh, press the left key, you're going to make uh, variable x is used by the table. So that'll tell you the equal to the left. And likewise, you are keyboard right button. You're not. 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 you
know that the women, uh, and that doesn't want to be the name of the church. You should be right with the Oh, yeah, you're right. Good call. We have a variable for that. This is a good thing to bring out how that room works. So I don't have to know that my room is 600 pages wide. When you create the shot, you want to have an event and you set the motion. You grab the moon uh, over here and you set the direction to be up and you set the speed to 12. And then most of you can use the player object now to give it an event so it can hit the uh, fire button. Uh, it will shoot that missile for the creator and it's very cheap. So uh, we give it a keyboard. And then at the end of this action, we create a new instance of our shot. And it's created at five equal negative right height. And then it the relative to location of the player object. Now we shoot at the lot of the shot. Uh, that's because every every step in the game, every one thirtieth of a second, it's detecting that the space is being pressed down and it's creating a new instance of the shot. So uh, we want to fix that because in space space we can't shoot that much. I think in the original space space we can only shoot one at a time. So what we'll do uh, to fix that is and uh, create an the player, and we're going to create a new variable. Uh, we'll call it can shoot. And we'll give the value of false. Now, in Game Maker, which is weird, there, I mentioned earlier, there's only two data types in Game Maker there's numbers and there's strings. So, false is actually a keyword that stands for zero, and true stands for one. And the way conditionals are evaluated. They, they perform an evaluation, and if the result of that evaluation is 0.5 or higher, true is the result, and if it's less than 0.5, true is the result. You can do funny things with your math and, uh, uh, and use them as sort of pseudo bullies if you want to. Some people do. Uh, I don't myself because I, I like to do, uh, I, I like coding where it's more expressive and clear. Even that that was kind of odd, uh, it's sort of less understandable. But it's perfectly legitimate to do it because it's that way you want. So now that we have a variable, I actually want to set the true of create. Uh, we will go back to our space file event and we'll say test expression and shoot. Now, if you can shoot, it'll create that instance of the shot. And then we need to change that. Um, <coughs> so what we'll do on for that is uh, we'll go to the shot object and we need to create one. We're going to reference the players that can shoot. So we're going to go player dot. That dot is uh, an accessor operation, so it allows you to bind the object and its variable into the false. So now, if we do 
this branch right now, I do have to shoot one time and it would change the can shoot to false and you would never be able to shoot again because nothing would touch that true. So what we want to do uh, with the shot is after it goes off the screen, we don't care about it anymore and we want to destroy it. So we have an event for that under other events. We have outside room event. And then we destroy objects. And before we destroy the object, we'll change the version and choose that. So now, if we do this in reverse order, the instance of destroying and by virtue of being destroyed, we perform like that. This order of operation here is important. Uh, and this should allow us now to create shots uh, when the time. Uh, actually, let's not do that. Let's create a destroy event because we have to destroy the shot when it doesn't touch the end. We have created the event. But uh, when we do it this way, it should be better. Uh, we, we use a destroy event and we'll set can shoot to fall here. That way, whether the shot goes off the screen or hits the enemy, when it gets destroyed, this uh, can shoot variable will be changed back to true. We can run that. And I only will shoot one at a time. So that's working. And this is the way generally I where it's a game maker, I do little tiny bits of stuff and test it, and then I do a little bit more and test it and fix things as necessary. It's a lot easier to fix things if you only change a little bit because you know where the problem is. If everything was working before and you could change something, that's what it's broke. Um, game maker does not have really good um, testing features or debugging features. It has some, and they're very rudimentary. And if I had a week or so to talk about them, I would do that. But uh, for this talk, we'll just, uh, I guess we'll leave that to the beginning of the And we'll get into it next mm -hmm. week and show you guys the more interesting techniques. Uh, but this week is just here to show us Now I have these two objects for my player, and the player shot. And I will uh, create a new object and call this uh, Omega. So the invader, when we create it, we can start moving to the right. So we'll set motion to this here to give them some direction to the right. And we know that in Space Invaders, when you hit the edge of the screen, uh, you revert and you drop down a little. So we'll do that when uh, there's a, an event called Intercept Boundary, which uh, just defines it, the action that takes place when the uh, object encounters the edge of the room. So the, the room has four boundaries, top, left, right, and bottom. And, um, when you intersect the boundary of the room, this event will fire. So what we'll speak to this is we'll choose another variable from the built-in given as a variable. And this is called uh, direction. We'll add 180 to the direction. And so the directions in game maker are based off of 360 circle. Uh, zero degrees is to the right and 180 would be to the left. And by adding it relative, we each time it's counter to the left or right edge, it's going to add 180 degrees to the current direction. So when it hits the left edge of the room, it'll add 180 to 180, and it'll wrap around that zero degrees, and it's ready to fire. And we want to also drop it a row. So we'll say y is the right height. That'll drop it down in addition to uh, reverse the direction. 
Now we have to add the bigger square here.
Alright, so now we have a working invader. Uh, let's add a couple more to our room. Put them here. As you can see here, when I'm clicking, it's actually placing it on this grid. And I don't really mind that because basically it just kind of plays on the grid. But if you want to find a tuning with that, you can uh, turn the grid off or adjust the snap to zero, zero, so you can see the screen. And that will allow you to just have a uh, little bit finer control over the object. But this works pretty well for space creators and we're using kind of as well. And I've got eight there and space creators in the table eleven in a row. Now if we play this, that's not quite what we want. So each individual guy is collides with the wall and it turns backwards. So we want all of them, so the whole formation should reverse as soon as the wing guy hits the bench. So let me fix that. Uh, this is the first thing that's actually a little bit tricky. It's not as straightforward as just trying to draw a map. Uh, there is a command in GameMaker language called whip. And whip uh, works in, uh, in the case that if you want to do a action with Every instance of the object that you're calling the width of time. And so that is what we'll have to do here. So an intercept boundary will let you see options are back to now. And we really want this to happen with all of the code data. So we add this execute code action, and this will allow us to add code to the element. With later. Direction plus equal eight plus equal right height. So what happened there? Uh, everything was fine until we added the second row. So what's actually happening here is when both of these guys hit the right edge of the wall at the same time, uh, they both have this width block that happens that reverses direction. And so this direction is now being reversed twice. And so reversing twice just continues going to the right and therefore it's still in intersect boundary position to the right edge of the room. So it continues triggering that and it's dropping a row each time. So they just go to the right and then drop off. That's not what we want. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to go back in here and we're going to need to create what's called a trigger. So if you go into the resources here and click find triggers, add a trigger called Trigger event to the 
copy this code here. set the variable that A equals true. Okay, so what happens now is both uh, of the rows will intersect at the edge of the room. So both set at edge to true, and that edge trigger will expire and be reversed at one time. Uh, we don't know what that is. Uh, so we didn't reference the variable correctly. Uh, we need to do the variable that we need. It's actually the same as the global variable. So we, are, we don't really need every invader now that we have. Trying to run that first thing isn't at the edge of the room, that variable is undefined and it, it causes the trigger to blow up. So let's actually add that to uh, the game creation program because that will make sure that it happens just like anything else. So now we have two rows of invaders reversing. We can see the top. Everything is good. And uh, what do we do now? We want to have more invaders. We uh, will create a new invader. We could just code all the same stuff we just did over again, but that's kind of wasteful. It uh, like goes all the effort, right? So I'm going to make uh, use of the inheritance feature and give the parent uh, or to or the phone data to the invader object. And that way, all the stuff that we just programmed in the invader will be inherited by the invader too. And uh, well, one other thing needs to be different. So uh, the point value for invader two should be different. Otherwise, what's the point? It's a little different. Uh, we'll add a create mess here, and this is going to override the create mess that we set up for invader. So we need to fix that. Uh, there is a call event action that calls the parent event, and that way it just adds on uh, these other actions that we're about to do. We'll set point to equal to 20. So in, in the parent event for the create, it will set, it will set uh, with the motion and direction, and then it will set point to equal to 10, and then in the two, it's going to call it out, and then it's going to change point to 10 to 20. So we'll have two different point value indicators. And that was so easy, we can do another one. So we'll duplicate this guy. And we'll call it over two. And we'll change this phrase to over three. So it's the same parent, and this point value is three. And we'll go and add this to 16.
play that, so I'll work. Uh, 
now we have shots of the crow on the ground, and it's like, that's pretty good. Now, uh, one of the things with space invaders, uh, when you start the game, the enemies are moving pretty slowly, and these guys are moving a little bit faster than that. But more to the point, when you destroy enemies, the rest of them speed up more, so we should program that in. So that invader here, do a little trick. Set the speed here equal to what's the speed we want to make this last so say 25 pixels per second. And if there was only one in the game, that would be but if you want the rest of them to when there's more of them, we want them to be slower. So divide that up by this number. This is a game major function. If you had zero, that would be a problem if you were still calculating. So we find a zero here. But since this would not be calculated if there wasn't an invader in existence, we don't have to worry about checking if I get a zero. So we're good. So when I died there, you notice that I didn't respawn. You need to fix that. Uh, I'm going to create a new object. And I'm going to call this object space And so when the object player causes the shot enemy, this frame is going to change it. Here will allow us to discover whether we want this symbol to create that enemy to transform from the player to the player's guy, or if we want to simply change it and leave it without calling to create a map. I think we do want to create two, call it create a map. Let's say one and a half seconds. So we'll do 1.5 times room speed. Room speed is 
variable that uh, is equal to the number of steps that the room price has to do with the cycle. So that would be one and a half seconds. After that alarm counts down to zero, we want to change it back to the player.
Down the bottom of white three, to the sides of white two, white one, white zero, and we've got one again. 
not all right, made of one. Now, if you wanted to have the game actually end and do more stuff, uh, we could play the word game over or something like that. Uh, we could do that. Uh, okay. Let's think about what we want to do in a game that's actually over here. Um, oops, I still hit. Oh, and then those players shot. Those shot. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
version that you're about to release, but they probably will do something eventually, I, I would think, to help. Uh, unfortunately, the major game maker uh, is a company called Yoyo Games. They don't have a public roadmap to the project, and so I don't know if they sort of plan to or not. The other thing I'll say is, uh, I became aware of this just a week ago, so I don't know a whole lot about it, but there is a open source project called Enigma, which is an effort to re-implement GameMaker and kind of augment it in various ways. And it's supposed to be, its first goal is to be as compatible with, with the stock GameMaker language and uh, runtime as possible, uh, but it also allows you to do more advanced coding probably allow you to do stuff like that uh, when they get to building it, and it's not the exact thing underway. So uh, Enigma is uh, an interesting project, but it, it, it's probably only about 75% compatible with being a point, so a lot of stuff. Uh, Any other questions? Yeah, I'm going to go Yeah, there is. Uh, you can repeat the question. Oh. Yeah, uh, the question was, uh, I, I was talking about some of the variables in GameMaker are built in, and some of them I was creating myself, and I wanted to know, is there a list of what is out there as far as built in variables? And uh, I didn't mention it, but I meant to. Uh, help menu is excellent in GameMaker. Uh, you can go into the and search on uh, stuff, and uh, there's all kinds of information here. So this is the first place to go for that. Uh, well, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here. And there, there is an article in here that gives you all the different variables, which ones are global, which ones belong to an object. There's variables for the sprite, for the object, for the room, and if you can use all of those very handy. So when you're trying to think of how you do stuff with, uh, you're trying to program with the corporate planet, you've never done it before, uh, going to help and being up on the language presentation and uh, learning about all these things as well. GameMaker also has really excellent user support forms. Uh, they have a good community of GameMaker developers, and they answer questions. So there's uh, a function on uh, uh, video games, sorry, so there's a forum uh, on the video games website where you can go and ask questions. And there's one, there's a chat room for, well, not a chat room, but that's a web forum for beginners and intermediate users, and there's one for advanced users. So if you have uh, more advanced questions, you can ask them there. And, uh, I think I realize there's a lot that it takes a year and a half to develop it, so I a lot of questions. I don't think there is some kind of Ruby. So why that Ruby? No, that language is Ruby. It's an interesting thought. I haven't really considered comparing the Maker language to Ruby. Um, why did you learn another language before starting out? GameMaker was developed initially in 1999. So it is a nice uh, is, is the answer. But uh, at the time uh, that this was initially developed, there really wasn't anything in the way of a stripped down, simplified language for us to do stuff with and teach young children, which is what the original intent was. And so, uh, again, there's a lot of weird quirks in game maker language. Uh, it has uh, a default call function. Uh, you can create your own function, which is called script. And a uh, script has a built in sequence of arguments that you can pass into it. Uh, but rather than let you declare what type of data it goes into and name them, it just gives you a generic list of 16. It's not arguing 0, 3, 15. Perl. 
<laughs> and then you can you can rename those once you're in the script to whatever variable you want. Uh, but it's a little bit funny that way. And then there's a lot of weird stuff about the uh, language. It's not a pretty language. It's not the most elegant language, but it is very simple. And so you have a lot less complexity than you would if you were trying to teach somebody pro excuse me, programming for the first time with a language where you start with yeah. all kinds of of uh, underlying concepts that you have to train somebody in terms of object oriented. Uh, there's nothing like a private uh, variable in case there's there any. Yeah, no, it's weird. But it, it's, it's a compromise because if you had to protect your, your data, it's an object that have addresses and better together square, it would be too complicated for uh, the young sound learner. Is, is the bot and uh, like you can kind of learn the value of having them by not having them. This is the way I look at it. So um, I actually learned a lot of good practices in programming by uh, making a lot of mistakes in my early teenager endeavors. And uh, so I, I would make a big mess out of things and I said, why can't I figure out what this variable is when this happens? Because I'm trying to trace the code in my head because it doesn't have a go other and uh, I mean, like both is too complicated and so I kind of was led by it's the feature's absence to yeah. recognize the importance of uh, encapsulation and distraction and area. So it has a very control method. You learn when to use it uh, very distinctively when you first get started with the So the language box for that feature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, is or can the output of game maker be quantified? I'm sorry, say that again? Is or can be the output of game maker be form compliant? I'm not familiar with what form is. But the question was, can the output of game maker be made form compliant? Can you explain to me what that is? It's an integrated protocol to interface with other applications. Ah, um, I have no idea. I don't know. Um, I don't know that GameMaker has output proper, for one. Uh, it does have uh, networking functions that I didn't talk about, which I suppose if you could set up a, a second thing to listen to the network output, and if the form works in that way, maybe you could. Uh, but I, Unfortunately, it's not familiar with the topic of the first. Okay, so um, I will leave you guys with uh, a video uh, because what I did is very simple. And I want you to have the impression that game makers is actually capable of doing cool things. So I have a video. Uh, various people have made Lots and lots of games, and this will show you 10, uh, 100 game maker games in 10 minutes. And these are really uh, graphics. Um,
Uh, I'll answer any other questions you can come up with thoughts, or if uh, anyone continue to give QA for the remainder of the time here. Done that. I don't know what the audio system came out on that. I'm going to stop this.